started learning gymnastics, I guess, age four or five, mm -hmm. when your mother brought you here. How, how come she, she brought you here to suckle? Well, first of all, we, we, uh, I was born across the street, and so we lived across the street. And, but in addition to that, my mother was born in Baltimore, and so she was a mem her mother took her to Sokol and when she was a child. At, in so Baltimore. it was a natural for you know Czechoslovak family yeah. to join Sokol. Well, I started as a team leader, as a teenager, and then became a class leader, and then we became a, a unit, which just means uh, Sokol, New York, uh, uh, director of women, and then uh, district director of women. Wow, Eastern District. Eastern District, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, but where else did you teach gymnastics? Well, I taught or? at the courses too at Soho, mm -hmm. and then I taught at Hunter College. How long did you teach at Hunter College? Oh, about Thirty years. Wow. Okay, physical education. Yeah, and, yeah, and for physical education for the elementary school too. Oh, okay. Wow. Which is nicer to teach, the elementary school or oh, the students? Oh, I like it. Well. I like it. Well. Since your grandfather was an early member of Suckle, New York, were you predestined to join? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I didn't even know he be, was a member of, of Suckle, New York, until we had this uh, archivist, uh, Yishi Victor, here. I don't know how he knew, even thought of my maiden name and then found my grandfather. Yeah. His name and here is one of the, I guess it's one of the founders, I yeah. suppose. Well, one you of could, the early members. You could, you could open members. it up to here. Let's see. Is it an alphabetical? Oh, yeah. You it's, we it we yeah. marked it up yeah. ahead of time because... It's better handwriting than I do. Okay. <laughs> you only spoke what? Czech. Czech, yeah. You spoke Czech at home and Czech. And the neighborhood was all Czech, so you didn't have to learn any other language. <laughs> When you came to Suckle, did you have to... Would... Well, many of the commands were in Czech, and uh, no, they spoke English, but the commands were in, uh, in, in Czech. So the instructors had no trouble with your lack of English, huh? No, because I guess everybody was in the same, uh, same boat at that time. <laughs> well, well, you speak, in English, you speak English quite well today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Today's when we moved up uptown from 71st to 77th Street. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess she had to hurry up and, you know, try to teach me English, not teach me, but it, uh, children learn in school very yes. quickly. Um, and so uh, at that time, you, everybody wanted to be American, and that's all, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And so I was very happy that my mother didn't send me to Bohemian School. I thought that was wonderful. And uh, uh, so I just, and because it was so easy for her to speak English and, and Czech, or Czech, it didn't make any difference. So at home it was all English after that, and so I forgot it, and I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> and that, but now I really regret that I didn't continue. As a, t a young child, everybody came twice a week. Mm -hmm. Everybody came twice a week. Every class had two times a week for ten cents a month. Ten cents a month. Yeah. I took the Sokol courses as an in instructor courses, and then I, later on I taught at those courses. Yeah. Oh, okay. And did you go to them as a teenager or two to well, yes, learn those, skills? Well, yes, those courses are for teenagers yeah, from 13. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't mean that we've had adults taking them too, but primarily you have teenagers in that, in that instructor's course. So where were those courses held? Oh, mostly at camps. So, uh, there was a camp, a, a Sokol camp, a Slovak Sokol camp in Boonton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Um, they held all around the country, and we had courses up at East Haddam, Connecticut, in our, at our camp. Uh, I remember going down to Baltimore. It was Bell Camp, which was the headquarters, not no headquarters, it was the shoe facility camp. for but your shoes. Oh, shoes mm -hmm. So they let us use those facilities, so we were down there. And then all over the country. But during the year, would you go to competing in Astoria or? Or, or well, you feel? didn't go very far when you were when you were young. I mean, when you're a when you're a child, it was only intra mural type things, mm -hmm. right within your own class. And then, as a teenager, then you would compete against other Sokols or in the AAU, Amateur Athletic Union. 
the AAU events were held where? Here or? A variety of gym places. I Turn mean, Rhine. Turn to Rhine at here or to Y. So yeah. we hosted quite a few here, yeah. So it was more than just supple gymnastics club, right. no, there were several that others. Right, no, others, yeah. yeah. Forgetting about gymnastics, they're probably your teenage years are very important. Mm -hmm. And you remember that, and of course that was, you know, there was a lot of gymnastics involved then. But that was a, a very important part of a life, and I think, um, my life anyway. And it mostly revolved around social friendships and social activities. Well, you met your husband George here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he was a member of Suckle too? Yes, he gymnast? was boys class, yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You're not the only one to meet, meet a husband here at Suckle, are you? No, no. <laughs> it seems to be many, uh, many in your category, yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it now, the, the picture of the girl, the young woman in the car in, in the restaurant room? When he passed away, people made donations to Sokol, mm -hmm. and so I, I felt that, you know, rather than just put it into the general fund, it should go for something specific in their memory. So uh, I requested uh, uh, my friend who's a painter, a good Sokol painter down in Texas, if she'd be good enough to paint, uh, make a painting, uh, and she did, so we presented that painting, and that's... In, mem in George's memory. Yes, and that's Henrietta Milan. Milan, yes. Yes, yes. Some of the programs that you started and helped develop here uh, were what? TOTS? Well, the TOTS program, yes. We try to keep it from six up, but sometimes children we get into the, children, the, the girls' program at five and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we wanted to start it for the earlier age group, so we started that. And the, uh, who was the instructor? Well, I was the instructor, and then Pauline Renock was mm -hmm. assisting. She was, uh, as one of the moms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They were she was a mom with her children. Yeah, yeah. And the other mom, <laughs> Pat and Kathy. Pat Greenberg had her children here, too. Yeah, and Kathy, okay. And where was it? In the basement, as it is today? Or is it on we the We started floor? in the, <clears throat> the large gymnasium. Oh, okay. With the there was no, nothing downstairs, so mm -hmm. oh, there was no equipment downstairs. Yeah, okay. Today there's a big tots area. And how about Taekwondo? You, well, you, you told me a story about the rental. Uh, we had a, a, an excellent judo program. And it was a, a master, I, I don't know what his title was, a master Japanese man. And uh, interestingly, it was during the war that he rented downstairs. He, he rented the facility. During but he became a very good friend yep. of ours, very mm -hmm. good friend. And uh, he said later on, he said he would never move from here because nobody else would rent to him because he was Japanese. Mm -hmm. right. okay. And he, he, he was really very well known, I guess. I don't know what the title he had, but I know when the first time the Japanese judo team came to the United States, they came to visit him. Oh. George Yoshida. Was his name. George. Yoshida. Yoshida. For rhythmic gymnastics, that's what the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame has inducted you for, for your work there. Uh, rhythmics is such a, a, a popular sport today. How was it when you first started? Oh, it wasn't popular, but it was popular to use hand equipment for, for calisthenic numbers, mm -hmm. for our special numbers. We always had uh, some type of hand equipment in the regular, regular program. Mm -hmm. It was not called rhythmic gymnastics, it was just uh, was a, uh, exercises with hand apparatus. So uh, we, uh, it was kind of a natural to move into that because other than Sokol and organizations like ours, others, the schools didn't use that kind of equipment for physical education. So, But Sokol, yeah. 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 Okay, so how has rhythmic gymnastics different from other gymnastics? Well, one is on the apparatus mm -hmm. or on the floor exercise and the rhythmic gymnastics is with hand apparatus. Uh, this book, can you tell us about this book, uh, the title and such, and can you tell us a little bit about it? Because this is the, the hand apparatus before the rhythmic gymnastics, I, I guess. Yes. Interestingly, uh, schools did not work with hand apparatus at that time. They didn't know too much about it. Schools. See it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason for the title, Gymnastic Activities with Hand Apparatus. If we put down there, hand apparatus, you know, exercises with hand apparatus, they'd have to look under E <laughs> and they would never find us. So we put gymnastic activities with hand apparatus. So that's the reason for that long, long title. Yes, it's 1965 and it's, it's uh, who do you, who was your co-author on this? Oh gosh, she's a, you know, you see she's on top, of course. 
Marie Provesnik while she was uh, the director of CHOS, which is the Czech, uh, you know, SOCOL organization. Uh, she was an unbelievable uh, person, really. So you worked with her on this yeah, book? Yeah. Um, Do you have to take a Full of knowledge, full of knowledge, in every way, really. She was, a, she was in the first class of women in Charles University, so I mean, that tells you something wow. about her. her uh, in Prague. Uh, she was a tough lady, I'll tell you. When she came over here, she was tough, but she softened over the years. <laughs> <laughs> they had young girls from here come over and do a rhythmic gymnastic routine. Do you remember that? Yes, of course. Yes. That a, that, how did the crowd like it? How did oh, the I think, I, yeah, we were very proud of them. That team developed into a nice, good, good uh, performing team, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, I think they they served us well. They served I think well. the people liked it. Yeah. And it was good public relations for Sokol. It's follows in your career of rhythmic gymnastics. Uh, well, they say you were Well, I feel, I mean, develop. I grew up in artistic <laughs> gymnastics, and uh, I mean, I, I judged artistic gymnastics for years, and I was an international judge with that. Oh, I didn't do any international judging, but I held, you know, I, that's, that's a big, but it came to a time when you could not be certified in both of those. So in you had to give up one or the other. And you gave up? I gave up the artistic because I was so involved in, in organizing this, uh, you know, little, this for the original committee, getting it organized in the United States, so it was more important to work there. I, I just want to switch now to, uh, to the BBLA portion, and, and you became a trustee and a delegate of Suckle, New York. Mm -hmm to Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association mm -hmm. when Suckle rejoined, because mm -hmm. Suckle parted ways at one time. Well, what do you think was some of the most important events there as in your years as a delegate? I think the most important thing happened when they, when they saved it from Manhattan Theatre Company. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then trying to keep it going with, uh, uh, it's, it was in such disrepair. Yes, Jan Herb Picorni arranged for a uh, fundraising to restore the facade because it was falling down. And, yes. And mm -hmm. that was when I yes. when met mm -hmm. you, I think. And then? Well, he was responsible for getting us involved with the Czech government. It, it's a political kind of thing to get them involved, and it was a big, a big, uh, it was going to be a big expense for them. But, uh, you know, it was a wonderful thing that it happened. So thanks to the people who worked on that. When judging rhythmic gymnastics, what elements do you focus on? Oh, again, it's the difficulty in the execution. And then a just general impression, which would be a you know, feeling of the gymnast and the, and the artist, artistry of the comp composition. You did do quite a bit of judging gymnastics, and I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed it, but how about when people disputed with you? Did you have many disputes? They say, oh, you should have judged higher. Oh, of course, of course, yeah. 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 How do you react to it? Well, I know best. <laughs> <laughs> you judged at Suckle events, at Pan American Games, at Olympic Trials, at four Olympics, and elsewhere. The list you showed me shows that you judged on five continents, including Cuba and the Caribbean, where most Americans were not allowed to travel. Can you tell us what it was like to visit Cuba as a Oh, judge? that was interesting, sure. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, nobody was, we were permitted to go because of Pan American Games, so. Otherwise. Otherwise you would not get in there. Um, it, it was interesting. Everything that we had, they, they could make use of. I mean, if you threw away the, that bottle, they could use that. I mean, it was, it was, it was interesting. But they still had the communist kind of, uh, uh, life where there were stores where only people of certain, well, let's say the party, could purchase things, mm -hmm. others could not. So it was, uh, you know, in that way, you know, there was a, two levels of, of citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I remember that you told me something about how your 
location was picked when you went to the for Barcelona. You went to the Olympics there, <laughs> and yeah. you stayed where? Well, we and stayed in a wonderful resort about an hour from the the center of the games, and um, the uh, president of the gymnastics group was a Russian, and uh, in his usual style, he chose something for his own benefit. His family was. Uh, visiting, and so it was very pleasant for his family to be at this resort while the games were going on. So you had to And travel. so the whole uh, gymnastic uh, community had to be there at this <laughs> resort, unfortunately, because we in order away. to get an, a good hour away from, from the center of activities. of gymnastics did you enjoy more than others? You did teaching, you did judging, you did learning, you did competing. I don't think, you know, at different times of your life you, you move into different uh, parts of the, the sport and, you know, I don't think there's anything that I like best. You know, at the time when I was doing it, it was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Gymnastics in your life it seems to be. It's been my, you know, in, in my whole life actually. Yeah. yeah. It's been a good part. Yeah. Yes. Sound mind, yeah. sound body. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, you really did. Well, in behalf of all your students and the students of the instructors you influence, thank you, Norma. And I well, think. Thank you for inviting me.